All right, I'd like to call this uh, public safety committee meeting uh, to order. Uh, the time is 6, 11 p.m. We did start a little bit later just due to technical difficulties, but we are all uh, we're here now. So just roll call. The entire committee is not present, but we'll just do a quick roll call. Uh, we have Wade Hunter present. We have Bill Potter present. Um, we are waiting on other committee members, uh, Robert Moore, Ralph Croy, and Brian Allen. We have one uh, attendee, Richard Fisk, so far. And you didn't say yourself, Nathan. Oh, you myself, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm present as well, Nathan <laughs> Lee. Um, we can uh, start with uh, item B on our agenda, general public comment on non-agenda items. Do we have any comments from our attendees? Uh, yeah, just one item uh, for our next meeting. I'd like to uh, get it scheduled for another traffic safety discussion. There's been a lot of accidents at uh, Westbury and Balboa. Uh, last Friday, I was on my way to down to the station and somebody came out of the uh, Westbury, pulled in front of the car next to me, cut him off for good. Thought that was pretty bad. Well, I got to the station, had to turn around, come right back because somebody had a bad accident there, really bad, doing the same thing. Uh, talking to the lady who manages the soccer field, she's saying that there's a lot of uh, accidents there. Uh, and if you notice, if you go northbound now on Balboa, uh, on the Colvin side of the street, on Friday, they put up a sign about yield to oncoming traffic on green. So what I'd, I'd like, I know it wasn't agendaized for this meeting, but I'd like at our next meeting to see a discussion about putting a no right turn on red sign on Westbury because people keep coming out and other people are flying down that hill. And uh, I've been to too many accidents there. So if we could just make note of that for, for next next month when we can put it on the agenda. Sure. I'll probably uh, do what I normally do, Bill, and just I'll reach out to the to the group ahead of time just to agendize everything. So I'll probably ask you, and but I'll, I'll make a note of it now, but if you wouldn't mind telling me again prior yeah, to me, it helps. If yeah. I have a senior moment. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. Um, any other general public comment on non-agenda items? Mr. Fisk. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Fisk. You have the floor. I have the floor. Oh, boy. Thank you. I hope I don't need to have them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just at the police station today and talking to Sergeant Torres, and he was... Uh, talking about uh, all the encampments that have been kind of cleaned up, all of them, I mean, a lot of them since uh, the last uh, quarter and this year. And he said uh, another thing that was interesting that would interest a lot of other people that there's been a 28% decrease in crime related to the homeless people. And also with encampments, uh, uh, there has been uh, several people, they have been trying to place them, not just getting rid of them and throwing them out and moving them out to other cities, they're actively trying to place them in the, uh, the few that the few encampments they've cleaned up recently. They have placed ten people in shelters and temporary housing. So uh, that's one stat that uh, like the South Council needs to hear. Great, great to hear. Uh, I hear they've got uh, room in uh, in New York at one of those hotels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I'm being facetious. And if you want, uh, I can just read you some of the stats I got today uh, relating the last quarter of the year uh, to the third quarter. Uh, part one crimes, homicide uh, is down 100%. Uh, rape is down 9%. Robberies are down 47%. Aggravated assault is down 40%. Residential burglaries are down 3%. Uh, commercial burglary is down 13, theft and uh, for motor vehicles, theft GTP. What is GTP, Bill? Grand theft, I don't know, GTP. i never seen that before. Uh, that's down 34%. Grand theft auto is down 33%. Burglary and theft from vehicles is down 21%. So total we're down in Devonshire, 28.2%. Yeah, so looking good. That's all because of uh, Bill throwing all those BMWs out driving around. Well, I, I also wonder how much of it's due to the rain. <laughs> He's probably right. Yeah, it's true. 
There, there was one interesting data point, though. Uh, we get a map every week of where to patrol for the LA, you know, the volunteer community patrol. And uh, last week we came in, or on Monday I came in, and they gave us last week's map. There wasn't a single uh, reported residential burglary or grand theft, or uh, and there was one grand theft auto, and that was the only what they call part one crime in Granada Hills and in Porter Ranch for the uh, uh, the prior week. And uh, they attributed a lot to us driving around and trying to scare people off. So uh, we've been actively recruiting, uh, getting new members. And again, the donation from the uh, North Valley Coalition and the Patriot Trust Fund has allowed us to bring new members on board. So it's uh, greatly appreciated. That's about all I have to say. All right. It was not an agenda item, so uh, yeah. I... I sort of, uh, since you guys uh, have, uh, you know, uh, a way back to the uh, uh, police themselves, uh, like to uh, make a comment, like to thank the fact that uh, I'm seeing patrol officers out there, a motorbike sitting down there just above Midwood and, you know, opposite the, uh, <coughs> the, uh, and I'm having a senior moment. Uh, the uh, what is the name? Oh, the Norwood Country Club in that area around there. Uh, it's really slowed the traffic down. I, 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 it's been really great. So I uh, just like to thank you guys for getting them out there and and slowing that traffic down. Yeah, one of the things we do is we go out with radar guns and we can't give uh, tickets, but we survey areas, find out where the bad spots in town are, and then we turn it over to uh, Valley Traffic Division. And that helps them decide where to put the uh, officers. And that's become one of our favorite happy hunting grounds. What, next week when we go out there, we're going to move up to Westbury. Don't tell anybody. But we're going to move up to Westbury and try to get them as they're coming down the hill there. Because it, it was uh, it was scary being out in traffic on uh, uh, on Monday with the, uh, the nuts out there. They were really coming down that hill hot. Well, speaking of, of traffic, one thing you might want to tell uh, everybody that we can, if you're involved in a traffic accident and uh, there's no injuries, you know, your police usually don't show up and you're either asked to report it online. However, we went to a TC today and all the, what we call the pirates were out. Uh, the pirates, uh, they're tow truck pirates. They're people that look at uh, uh, phone apps and see uh, that an accident has occurred and they race to the scene uh and go up to the victims and say hey I, I need some help towing your car and then they'll pull out some paperwork hey we'll get a towed for you right away and then blah 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 but they aren't official they can't be official but they're uh they they have them sign waivers and without any prices on it and uh it could cost them thousands of dollars to get their car uh pay the towing fees and get it out of impound uh there was several of them today the we had a a, uh, it was a, not really an injury accident, but uh, for some reason, the motor officer was there, was online as a code three call, actually. It wasn't a serious accident, um, but the pirates were out. Uh, the officer actually uh, saw them, and they stayed there even after the officer left while we waited for the tow truck. And I, I got out of the car because it, one of them went up to the vic victims again and started wanting to talk to him. And when he passed me by he just gave me the dirtiest look walking by <laughs> but uh, they're still out and you got to caution people uh, to make sure that it's you you as a victim that call the tow truck company or an officer that calls the official police garage uh there was a tow truck that did show up that wasn't authorized so good information for everybody yeah where was the tc richard uh balboa and devonshire um Someone, one young woman ran into uh, some other person that looked like, I don't know who was in fault. It was unfortunate the the one of the victim's cars, they were going to a doctor's appointment. <laughs> so good way to start the year. Hmm. Anyway, that's it, Nathan. All right. Thank you, Richard. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Wade, are you still there? I think we lost video feed of Wade. Probably ran to flip his dinner on the stove. Since we're uh, still on, I guess, uh, you know, general public comments, not agenda items. Uh, I, I did notice on uh, Rinaldi at Aliso Canyon, the last RV straggler is, is now gone as of a few weeks ago, it seems like. So that's 
that's a positive development. Hi, Linda. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, uh, the senior lead officers got money from John Lee's office to work on outreach, and they got all in the leave but one. So there was mm -hmm. the one that was further up on Rinaldi over towards uh, Tampa. They got that one to go, and then they got the one at Aliso Canyon to go. And then uh, it took about three days to clean up their uh, trash that they left behind. But I yeah, think I... Uh, all the people that called into us and asked if we could get something done for them ought to be pretty happy because uh, it it was it was a hell of a job. Yeah, I I saw the trucks cleaning up the debris uh, after that last RV left on Rinaldi at Aliso, and uh, I know it was an, it wasn't an easy task. So I, I'm sure the 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 residents around that area. I uh, greatly appreciate all the efforts. One hopes. All right. Well, I'm not sure if anyone, Wade, were you able to get a hold of Ralph? Uh, that was Ralph's wife. And Ralph said he couldn't get on because he didn't have the agenda. And I said, you'd send it out. So they asked me to send him the agenda right now. So that's what I'll do. So. Okay. Give me a second. Let me find my uh, somewhere along here. I got a uh, there it is. Keyboard. Oh, if it, if it's just a matter of an agenda. I could send the agenda as well. Uh, yeah, I, 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 um, uh, second and send. Where are we here? You know, looking okay, at the, it goes. Uh, looking at the agenda that you sent out, I do not see Ralph copied on it. I see uh, Aaron. Oh, but he's on the uh, but he's on the board. Board, okay. Bill, yeah, the board goes. It's supposed to go to everybody. Because I, I I see it says Aaron Board, Oscar Gibson, Bill Cotter, Wade. Yeah, but but he's a member of the board, so he's copied but on. I I'd put him on it. I really would because you can see he's apparently not found it. So, yeah. So, right. okay. Well, I sent it off. So, I, like I said, I made a couple of calls and, um, you know, and that was his wife. So, yeah. I did my best. Okay. All these others have uh, all these other items have motions or just That's see as right. it, yeah, CD so and E. Yeah, we would need him to hopefully gets here. Could he call in as well through the telephone number? Yeah, I, I was, I, matter of fact, yeah. I just got my phone. I was gonna try a cell phone and see why he wasn't answering the home phone, but uh, oh, I'm, I'm saying he'd call his wife called, so apparently yeah. he's home. And I did forward the email, so yeah. And I told him how to go. You can just go, you can go, you can go to the uh, GHNNC website. I know, and you can click on thing, get down to the agendas and click on to, and you can find it. I know. So, I know. Yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah. So, Nathan, you do need to add him to your distribution and. and... Bill, Bill, are you going to the uh, Secret Service meeting tomorrow? No, I'm on patrol tomorrow. Why don't, why don't you go to F to committee comments and then we can just talk about anything at this point and we may assist C, D, and E until we get Ralphie. That's fine. Let's go to F, item F on the agenda tonight, committee comments. There we go. In business now. Go, Bill. <laughs> um, well, the only thing I have really is to discuss the uh, the motion on the uh, uh, proposal I put in for no, uh, no left turns on the red arrow at uh, Balboa and Rinaldi. So do we want to chat with about that when Ralph gets here or do we want to chat about it now? I think I think we should probably wait till Ralph gets here just to make sure we have quorum to, to have yeah. a discussion on the issue. Yeah. yeah if you didn't. Uh, one thing I did, Nathan, I did send you I was I was concerned that uh, the uh, 
city had stopped painting uh, center divider lines on all the roads around in order to save money. But uh, I, I know on El Oro, we got ours painted because the darn road was curvy and it was, uh, was really a, a problem with, you know, traffic passing over on the wrong side and you're almost having head on collision. So they did do that. However, there's a number of streets up in the area that, um, you know, um, they're hilly. You, you, you're basically driving up. You can't see. They got guys coming. Somebody comes flying over the hill on the wrong side. And you're basically toast and you have to swerve to the side to avoid them if there's room because the road's very narrow and this car's parked. So I was kind of wondering if maybe we could get something, if I ever want to put a gender item up there to discuss roads in our area that have that have a number of curves in it or hills where people can't see the oncoming traffic but we go make a list of these and ask to get the uh, center dividers at least painted in those areas sure um, i just think it would be a good thing i i yeah. don't know if anybody else has experienced that. i would think Bill, you've been in that you oh, drive around those back streets. Oh, yeah. The right where near where I live, of Roseco is the same thing. It makes a 90 degree turn. And as it's going around, everybody's on the wrong side of the road. It used to be painted and they slurried it. And that was the end of that. Yeah. Hey, just um, uh, we have Ralph joining us now. So we have quorum. So, uh, Ralph, okay. can you hear us? Yes, I can. Great. I, have hey. I got all the emails about discussion of what they should put on the meeting but i never got a copy of the full meeting so yeah not sure you. what happened ralph yeah the, the the email was sent out to all the board members so you you're copied on that but um wait and we we discussed it just now perhaps i'll add you as an individual email as well but yeah when the email did go out to the entire board so you should have included received that well uh, I, I finally got it yeah. Excuse me, gentlemen, but I have to take off and do something else. Uh, thanks for letting me give you some info. Thank thanks, you, Richard, for joining. Appreciate it. Thank Adios. You, All right. Thank you. I see Karen's joined us, which is nice. She has, yeah. Um, so let's. Um, hi, okay, let's uh, let's go back to item C then, since we have quorum now with Ralph Croy joining us. Thanks for joining, Ralph. Appreciate it. Um, item C is discussion and potential motion regarding collisions at Rinaldi and Balboa caused by motorists passing through the red light to make left turns from northbound Balboa to westbound Rinaldi. So I'll open it up for discussion. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, there's been a lot of uh, what we call TCs, traffic collisions there. And I'm sure everybody's familiar with that uh, intersection, which has gotten worse since the uh, Reseda off ramp has been closed. But it's a very wide intersection. So the people that are going northbound on Balboa that are waiting to make the left turn, a lot of them are stopping way back at the the stop, you know, the limit line. The light then turns, uh, uh, you know, they they get the arrow to go left. Now uh, the arrow goes away, but they get a green light, and now southbound traffic traffic is coming. When the southbound traffic finally stops, people usually wait one or two seconds or half a second or whatever and then make their left turn. And you often get two, sometimes three cars making a left turn, going against the red light, and the people are now starting to go uh, eastbound on, uh, on uh, Rinaldi. So my proposal would be that just like it's done at Midwood, that you get a, a green arrow, and then when the southbound traffic starts coming down Balboa, that green arrow turns to a red arrow. So again, visualize it. If you're driving up now, uh, when you get on Balboa and Rinaldi, you get a green uh, arrow and then a green circle that you can go anytime. But up at Midwood, you now get a green arrow or a red arrow. You cannot turn red or left when the oncoming traffic is coming down. I think it would make a huge difference in how many people are going across that intersection. And again, being a very wide intersection, if you're in the, uh, the, the two left lanes on Rinaldi to go left on to Balboa, you don't even see sometimes over to the right side where the people are waiting because they're so far back. So that, that's my proposal that, uh, again, I don't think it will impact, you know, it will impact about two cars at a light for the people that are running through the, the light now. But that sort of precedent is all over the city. If you're on uh, Devonshire heading west and you get to Winnetka, same thing. <laughs> it turns red arrow and you can't turn south on Winnetka. Um, so I, I would just like to 
put that up for motion that we we request the city to you know change that to a red arrow as opposed to a a, a green circle for that cycle all right thanks Bill. Second to the motion unless there's any more discussion well i think that's a very good idea yeah, I've just been to too many fender benders and then, you know, I had the green light. No, you didn't. I had a green light and, you know, take it up with your insurance. Don't yell at me. I, I can't deal with it, but there, there's a bunch of them at that, that intersection. And uh, I, just before somebody gets themselves killed on it, I'd like to, you know, slow them down a bit. All right. That's a very frustrating intersection because people had to wait so long to get into onto Balboa in the first place and then they have to make a left and turn that so they're really frustrated they block the intersection at Balboa and uh, the, the freeway uh, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible intersection yeah and I blame the city for that because they're playing games at the Reseda, Reseda off ramp all right I think there's a second um there uh, was a second, second. second so let's 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 uh put this to a vote Karen uh, has her hand up Oh, okay. Oh, no, no, she doesn't. Maybe she's not. No, it's me. I'm sorry, Karen. It's my, <laughs> my curse has slipped over to your name and it turned to a hand. I'm sorry. All, all right. Hi, so, Karen. Oh, um, hello. hello. All right. So unless there's uh, there, there was a second. Uh, so let's put this to a vote. So uh, Bill Cotter, your vote, please. Aye. Uh, Wade Hunter. Aye. Ralph Croy. Aye. I will vote aye as well. So it passes unanimously four to zero. All right. Um, Bill, uh, we have our meeting, our board meeting is next Tuesday, the 7th. I know normally you you offer to draft letters, um, you know, uh, for these types of motions. Yeah. Um, I know Oscar is also asked to have the letters in hand, you know, prior to his ability to agendize for the board meeting do you think you could put something together that quickly or would you rather yeah, I'll have just... something done tonight or tomorrow okay and then that way i can forward if you could send it to me then i'll flip it to oscar uh with our agenda items as well sure. i'd appreciate that thanks bill yeah all right let's go to the next uh, agenda item d is and dog um discussion and potential motion regarding for ghnnc public safety and ghnnc outreach to co-host a town hall with cd12 due to the mental health and fentanyl crisis I'll turn it over for discussion. Well, I think that's a good idea. My only question would be, what would be the intended outcome of it? Uh, I, it's, I, I think we have a obviously a, a, a crisis out there, but I, I don't know what the town hall would be doing as far as educating people or what we're hoping to get out of it. So I'm just wondering, you know, besides having a town hall, is there a... Uh, intent i see karen has her hand up where would you have the town hall go ahead go ahead karen you have the floor yes thank you um this um uh, this was inspired uh by um um two two ways one council member um sorry uh school board president carvalho uh had a town hall on knx radio and it was pertaining to how many lives have been lost and testimonies from parents who actually lost children and in addition to that deputy chief hamilton alan hamilton uh he i was at a luncheon for him um in december and he said this is a very serious crisis do everything i've already spoken with council member lee's office matt hernandez has already taken the the necessary um contacting the necessary people to to for uh, you know, from the Department of Health and the qualified individuals, but <laughs> it's that serious that you know, in, back in the old days, someone might have a headache and they ask for you know, maybe something from a friend. You can't do that now. You know? So the intent is to save lives. Now, is this going to be virtual or no? It would be by the time everything is put into place, it would be in person and it would depend on our usual either St. Euphrasia or Kennedy High School. Okay. And I guess from from that, uh, since we're public safety, uh, it would make sense that it would be a concern 
uh, for us. I mean, I don't know what I was actually co-hosting because it seems like uh, you're really going to, the outreach is really going to chair it and run it, right? No, not really. I mean, this is, and, and that's why we would, it starts with, once we hear from Matt Hernandez and, you know, we'll maybe at a future meeting, we can, we can have Nathan um, maybe put Matt on the agenda to explain um, the presenters and who would be involved in the panel discussion. Uh, one in particular, uh, I asked him to see if he could contact um, Dr. Laura Berman and her husband. They're renowned, well-known in the city and they lost um, a son during the pandemic crisis. So, um, they spoke, so that's, uh, that's the concept. Um, okay, I, I'm sorry, Karen, I just have questions. Um, I, I know that we could support it. I just don't know. Co-hosting is what's expected of us as co-hosting. I mean, you know, hey, uh, you know, we show up there and we basically help out. I mean, this is what I'm asking because it, I don't, I think it's more your bailiwick than it is ours at this point. So, although we all understand about fentanyl. I mean, I've even, you know, talked to my own grandson and told him, anybody, you don't take a pill from anybody, right. even if you know them, nothing, you know, I said, those kids are, you know, dying in schools because they've, they've taken this right. stuff. And, right. and so, yeah, it, it really is a concern, but I'm just saying us as a, a committee, a safety, what yeah. is it that we can contribute? I mean, we obviously could support what you're doing. I just don't know what would be expected of us when you say co-host. Well, as we have co-hosted events in the past, you know, we, we would sit, we would, I would say outreach and public safety would work with maybe Matt Hernandez and maybe Department of Health as well in some proposed questions, panel questions, because it, these, these town hall meetings are always structured with some in-person questions, some questions that have been, you know, written by the public as well as the committee questions. So that would be questions from you gentlemen and from our committee. And maybe, you know, once we take it to the board, maybe it would be a, a, a board, a special meeting, which seems to work better for the city clerk's office. So it's it's a work in progress, but I want to start by um, sharing it with Nathan so that we could at least uh, see uh, the thoughts and, and understand the concept for it, because it is a safety. And mental health is the other part of that. Um, Superintendent Carvalho and one of the psychologists had mentioned that, you know, Many people, especially with the pandemic, you know, crisis, have um, shut down, and people don't speak to each other. You know, even parents are kind of into their own thing and not speaking to their children. Not all parents, you know. Nathan's an excellent parent, but I'm just saying that it's important that it all be addressed. And in that platform, at least, we are taking. I mean, CD12 thinks it's a great idea, so um, I just put the put the feelers out to see what their thoughts were yeah. and so and, and Karen if I if I may and I could support you the reason is when I mentioned my grandson and me telling him that mm -hmm. I asked his dad I said have you told him about he goes no what are you talking about this is my own he, son my youngest son he didn't he didn't know anything about it you yeah, know and I'm exactly. going hey and he said well you tell him then so I went after my grandson so yeah people there are people that don't know about this stuff right. and like I said I'm sure our committee, and well, I can't speak for all of them, but I, I certainly could support what you're asking for. I was just concerned as to what you would want from us or need sure. from us. It sounds like you would be the, the outreach committee would be the driver of this particular thing. And, and I don't know, Wade, that present that what you just said there, that you could easily drive it. Uh, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I have enough to do. Okay. No, no. no. I mean, it, it seems to be more your, you know, something that you're more into. You have the context. We, I don't. I, I don't think unless Nathan does. But I'm not aware of that. Uh, you're, you're more connected downtown, and you're more into what has been going on. So I would assume that outreach would take the lead on it. Um, could I, could I suggest that we see what Matt Hernandez comes back with as far as a framework? You know, sure. maybe John Lee's office is going to do most of the heavy lifting. We just have to help with some of it. But that's the idea. Know, if we can get an idea out of them what they want, you know, are they looking for us to come up with, uh, you know, mailers or a venue or, you know, whatever. 
uh, or a speak, you know, there's going to be four speakers. Do they find three and we find one? You know, I, I, I mean, anything that helps keep somebody off the stuff or saves a life, I'm for. I just need to understand, you know, what what the expectation is. Sure. And that's the point I was making. I, I, I think, you, I mean, we it, we could support this in principle. It's not a pro. I don't think it's a problem for any of us. It's just that, you know, what do you need from us to do? Okay. All right. I also want to find out financially because if we can avoid dealing with the city's city clerk's office, that is always ideal. As we know, that can always be a frustrating experience. But if we have to host a, a special meeting, we can get around, we might be able to get around some of those event forms. Although knowing the new city attorney, I don't think that's going to happen. No. Um, I can't speak for Patriot Oil, but if you make a request to Patriot Oil, we have helped neighborhood council in the past. Uh, it's within our area that we service. Uh, it would go to um, our community. So it wouldn't be, uh, you know, it's something that we, I'm, I at least I could support. I would be happy to bring you would have to have dollars. As long as, we don't get, as long as we don't get sued again, Wade. Uh, no, 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 we're not, we're not, we're not co-hosting anymore. I heard we, about that. After we were sued, uh, we won't do that. <laughs> yeah. I need to, to, I need to dash because we got started a little late and I need to go catch up with my dinner. So is there anything that I'm needed for before we go? Um, uh, you got a last one. Thank um, you. Yeah, we have one more. Thanks, Karen. Bill, can you hang on for a minute or two? Because we, yeah. we have one other item that we don't, we won't have quorum if you leave for dinner. So maybe right. we can try to speed through this. So let's quickly then let's, let's, I think, um, unless there's any, is there a second to vote on item D? I'll second it. Okay, so it's second. Let's vote quickly on D. So um, all, all four, uh, the motion? Aye. Aye. Ralph? Aye. And I'll vote as well. So it passes 4-0 in favor. And let's quickly go to item E as an echo. Discussion and potential motion regarding how to resolve the delay of repair by the city of Los Angeles regarding the embankment collapse at Bull Creek at Balboa Boulevard. Uh, the sidewalk has been closed for one year. So I'll open it up for discussion. I think I can help you wrap this up right now. Um, did you see the letter, Nathan? Um, the city council actually took action um, in September and I was uh, received from council district 12 again. They um, have the engineers going out and they're going to try to expedite um, getting it um, completed. I'll forward you the email I received. I just received it yesterday. I believe okay. I forwarded it, but hey, yeah. yes. Yes, I did. 881,000. And the last I saw, they were going out for bids. Right. Right. Okay. I received one from Jonathan at um, CD12. Right. Okay. Thank you for that, Karen. I appreciate that. If you could forward that email, I don't know if I've received an email from yesterday, but. Um... No, he only sent it to me, but oh, I'll be gotcha. happy to share it with you. Okay. Fantastic. Um, any, any other further discussion on item E? I would like uh... to know what they're going to do because. At eight hundred thousand dollars, are they going to make a an abutment there and a few other things to pack up the side to get a little bit more? Yeah, but There's Ralph, it isn't. They're just going out for bids right now. So that's that they they in the letter it tells you what the process is, and you got a copy. Okay, if you read it, it will tell you that they're and they're going out for bids. So you don't know what work has to be done. But obviously if the embankment is gone, that's what they, it does mention building, I think about a 10 or a 15 foot retaining wall in there. Yeah. I tell you, my big worry is that they start digging up Balboa and get into a mess like they got into on uh, the Reseda off ramp and we lose a lane or two lanes on Balboa for six months. Come on. Yeah. Well, <laughs> as I as I believe I told Karen before, um, the other side of the road collapsed, and that's when we had the sinkhole in Balboa on the other side of the road, and I called at Greg Smith. Greg came out, and he brought a city engineer with him, and as they were standing there, it collapsed. So that whole area, because Bull Creek passes through underneath there, and there's a whole series of, uh, the, the, there's a, a, a a water main in there somewhere and whatever passing it. It's a lot of stuff in that area. And that that is, if you remember from the earthquake that we had everything, that whole quarter mile area slipped south. 
So there could be, Lord knows, could be anything under there, and you could be right. We, Wade, we um just uh, I think we're gonna lose quorum in a little bit. I think Bill's yep. being summoned to dinner. Yeah, so sorry, uh, shall we? Sh what do you want to do here, Bill? I think this. I'm sorry, Bill. Wade, this was your um e item. E was your item. Do you want to table this to the next public safety committee meeting? Yeah, what do you want to do here? Yeah, I believe we wanted the status of it basically, and we did get it. Uh, Karen did get forward okay. that letter to us, which is lining out what uh, uh, John Lee's office has done and the things going out for bid. There's nothing we can do to make it go any faster. So I would say, yeah, go ahead and table it. We're, okay, we're well, we'll, let's go ahead and table it. Do, should, should, do we need to vote on that? Yes, probably. No, if, if Wade submitted it, he wants to table it. That that ends it there. Yeah. Okay. We're good. All right. All right. Very well. Thanks, Wade. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Bill, thanks, uh, thanks for staying on. And I appreciate it. We all appreciate it. Thanks. Good night, everyone. Have all a right. good Talk evening. Okay. Right. Good night, bye Karen. Bye. 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 Good night. We're adjourned, right? Um, unless there's any other committee comments. I think Ralph didn't have an opportunity to, to make any committee comments. Ralph, would you like to make any committee comments? Well, I would like to. I'm familiar with that intersection because on the west side of Balboa, there used to be the property of the Norwood Methodist Church which I'm a very, uh, I've been uh, on the trustees there. There is a large diameter of uh, water pipe there that's been abandoned, but uh, it's used by all sorts of people in there, uh, homeless people, et cetera. So uh, it's a very interesting underpass and uh, Bull Creek goes under that and it's, uh, underneath uh, as a another tube, another thing, and it shows up on the other side there. So there is a lot of concern that the city's going to have to look at there. Um, that's what bothers me. That uh, it may be a long uh, system that we're looking at. Okay. Because I, I've looked at that area from the other side when. Um, it was going to be part of a, a uh, sort of a park that was part of a uh, settlement, I think, for the uh, landfill at one point. And I, I don't know if you remember that. Uh, yes. Way. And uh, they had all sorts of work there too. So uh, there's a lot going on there. And it's also was a, a uh, sort of a sanctuary too. So it's, all right. And uh, Wade, Ralph, any other uh, committee, committee comments? If not, we'll adjourn the meeting. Go ahead, Wade. Uh, I'll only just tell you on what Ralph was talking about is it was a wetlands uh, restoration that was done in that area, but also it's part of county. County, there's a big box culvert underneath that you don't see, and then the creek runs over top of it as well. So it's very complex in that area. I'm surprised that the county hasn't got sort of beat up but if it's just the uh what it seems to be is just the uh embankment to the roadway it, it that would be city but if it's anything else uh lord knows <laughs> so we're just kind of bring you up to date on that but ralph's right what he was telling you about the the wetlands restoration that we did in there and it wasn't make, gonna make it a well it kind of was going to be a park sort of thing it was going to be a walkthrough but yeah all right anyway Thank you, uh, Nathan, for letting me talk. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining tonight. I really appreciate it. Sorry about the technical difficulties, uh, you know. And, uh, no problem. And we got Ralph on the distribution. Put him on for this one, and we know that we'll yeah, Ralph, you'll, you, you'll get two yeah. notices. So. I'll, I'll, Ralph, I'll, I'm making a note to myself to, to send you an individual email as well as the email you should be receiving from the board. So I'm not sure what happened there, but um, but again, thanks, Ralph. Thanks for joining tonight. We really appreciate it. You helped us yeah. make quorum so we could discuss these motions. So really appreciate it. All right, everybody, uh, have a good night. We'll see you at the next meeting. Okay, thanks, Nathan. Th thanks, Bye, Ralph. Ralph. Thanks, Wade. Good night.